Are you unknowingly stacking the deck toward fatty liver disease every time you pour a glass of water or cook a pot of rice? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. Today we're looking at new evidence that links everyday arsenic exposure with a higher risk of fatty liver disease, why the risk shows up even at low levels, and what specific steps you can take to lower your burden. I'm Alara Sky. Fatty liver disease now affects about 4 in 10 U.S. adults, and the terms you may hear, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, or the newer metabolic dysfunction-associated steatotic liver disease, describe the same condition. What's driving its rapid rise goes beyond weight, diabetes, or cholesterol. A large analysis has pointed to arsenic you meet in routine food and beverages. The study, published in the Journal of Translational Gastroenterology, used U.S. NHANES data from 2011 to 2020. Researchers evaluated 6,386 adults with urinary arsenic measurements and liver enzyme data, excluding other major liver disease causes. After adjusting for age, sex, BMI, smoking, alcohol, and socioeconomic factors, higher urinary arsenic tracked with higher ALT and greater odds of fatty liver disease, rising stepwise across exposure quintiles. Participants in the highest arsenic quintile had a 55% greater likelihood of fatty liver disease than those in the lowest quintile. Even the average numbers tell the story. Those with fatty liver had higher mean urinary arsenic than those without. Because the exposure reflected normal U.S. life, mainly from food and water, the findings matter to you even if you don't live near an industrial source. Mechanistically, arsenic disrupts your liver in several ways. It pushes oxidative stress beyond your antioxidant defenses, damages proteins and DNA, and signals inflammation. It also impairs mitochondria, so your liver leans on less efficient energy pathways that favor fat storage. On top of that, it activates fat synthesizing switches like P, PAR gamma, and SRE, BP, 1C, and interferes with glucose handling, promoting insulin resistance that accelerates fat buildup. Rice stands out as a major dietary source. Flooded fields make arsenic more bioavailable, and rice plants accumulate it. Testing campaigns have repeatedly detected arsenic across rice products sold in the U.S., with brown rice typically higher than white because outer layers concentrate metals. Southeastern U.S. brown rice trends among the highest, while California white rice, Indian basmati, and Thai jasmine tend to test lower. Preparation matters. Soaking overnight and boiling rice in 6 to 10 parts water to 1 part rice, then draining, can remove up to about 60% of arsenic. Rinsing alone makes little difference. For infants and toddlers, rice-based cereals and drinks can drive exposure beyond health-based thresholds, so avoiding rice cereals is a prudent step. Water is the other everyday source. Groundwater can naturally carry arsenic above what regulators consider safe. The U.S. limit for public systems is 10 parts per billion, yet studies associate even 5 to 10 micrograms per liter with elevated cardiovascular risk. Private wells are a special concern because many are never tested. Reverse osmosis or certified filters are reliable options to remove arsenic. Wine can add to the burden. Analyses of popular bottles found inorganic arsenic levels that, in some cases, exceeded the drinking water limit by several fold. There is no federal arsenic standard for wine, and alcohol itself stresses your liver. Combining the two increases oxidative pressure and undermines detoxification, which can magnify long-term metabolic harm. Lowering exposure is only half of the equation. Giving your liver the raw materials to repair is the other half. Choline is central because it enables your liver to package triglycerides and export them instead of storing them. Egg yolks offer the richest food source. Muscle meats and fish contribute moderate amounts, and some plant foods such as cruciferous vegetables add smaller amounts that still help. If diet falls short, citicoline is a supplemental form worth considering. It's highly bioavailable and supports both phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylethanolamine, 
strengthening liver cell membranes and mitochondrial integrity while assisting triglyceride export via VLDL. Typical daily intakes range from 500 to 2,500 milligrams. An added benefit is support for acetylcholine, which many people notice as better focus and mental clarity. Your ability to maintain healthy phosphatidylcholine also depends on methyl donors. Folate, vitamin B12, and methionine drive the PMT pathway that converts PE to PC. Practical food sources include folate from beef liver and dark leafy greens, B12 from animal foods such as wild-caught salmon and pastured eggs, or a supplement if you don't eat animal products, and methionine from eggs, chicken, turkey, beef, and lamb. Daily movement supports the process. You don't need intense training, a 10 to 20 minute brisk walk after meals, stretching, and a couple of brief strength sessions each week improve insulin sensitivity and blood flow. Watch your waist. More than 40 inches for men or 35 inches for women signals visceral fat that correlates with liver scarring, so inches lost at the waist are a meaningful sign of progress. Sleep is another lever. Aim for consistent restorative nights in a cool, dark room and avoid eating within three hours of bedtime. Even modest sleep improvements dial down inflammation and improve insulin sensitivity, giving your liver the downtime it needs to repair. Certain removals are decisive. Seed oils high in linoleic acid, soy, corn, sunflower, safflower, canola, generate oxidized metabolites such as 4-HNE that damage mitochondrial membranes and impair fat metabolism. Avoiding these oils in cooking and processed foods reduces a major driver of liver stress. Alcohol is another. Even moderate intake adds to oxidative load and slows recovery. Not all choline products perform equally. Choline bitartrate and choline chloride are poorly absorbed for liver needs, raise TMAO more substantially, and don't meaningfully elevate hepatic phosphatidylcholine. Lecithin requires large doses and often brings excess linoleic acid, which works against mitochondrial health. Balance matters with food sources, too. Very high liver intake risks vitamin A excess, and heavy reliance on red meat can contribute to iron overload that accelerates oxidative injury. Let's turn this into a practical challenge. Over the next seven days, choose one rice variety that tests lower on average, California white, Indian basmati, or Thai jasmine. Soak it overnight, cook it in ample water, and drain it. Test your drinking water, or use certified filtration if you rely on a well. Add choline-rich eggs to breakfast, remove seed oils from your kitchen, and take a 10-minute walk after your largest meal. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.